Welcome to Chatufa TV Productions. Chatufa TV Productions, connecting you to the world. Festive greetings to you all citizens. We send our love to you. We really love you, we appreciate you, we respect you and we honor you. Family, you are a jewel to us. This channel, Chatufa Television Production, is what it is because of you and your support. For those that are joining us also for the very first time, please join this family. Just do the honorable thing of honoring the work done on this channel by simply pressing that subscribe button you like and also share if this message is of great importance to you it may also be important to the other person share it with your loved ones so we can continue to conscientize each other and share information on issues that are affecting us as citizens and as a nation thank you very much for those that want to support this channel Please come and communicate with us on our email and we will map out the way forward. Today we are looking at the signs of times that we are seeing in the nation every day. We are seeing greatest signs to the end of Mnangagwa's rule. The greatest signal is now very visible and can be seen by all. And in this discussion we are going to be looking at major signals that we are seeing indicating the dictator is going down. Zimbabwe unfortunately has become a statistic as one of the many African countries to be ruled by dictatorship. Worse still, Zimbabwe's own, having been even double trouble, suffering a consecutive succession of tyrannical rulers back to back. Such an unfortunate scenario he has seen Zimbabwe counted among the most dangerous places to live, the most corrupt nations, the most unhappy nations of the world, and the worst performing countries economically, worse than even those at war. Despite calls to restore democracy and good governance, Zimbabwe's ZANU-PF has continued stiff-necked and unmoved, pressing on unperturbed, typical of most dictatorships the world is seen. The rise of Emerson Mnangagwa has seen the brutal and collapse of the little left governance principles, making the situation of Zimbabwean people even more unbearable. Mnangagwa comes as a bull in a Chinaman's shop, bulldozing all systems, declaring himself king and Zimbabwe a kingdom. This self-aggrandizement has spelled out a clear trajectory, helping us to categorize him in the different characteristics or caliber of non-dictators. Dictators are all the same and they differ insignificantly in their divide, with their greatest contrast being the behavior that leads to their downfall. And Emerson Mnangagwa is not an exceptional. His recently projected plan to amend the constitution so he goes into third term or even life presidency helps us categorize him with the former dictatorships that made such moves leading to their end and fatal collapse. Let Mnangagwa press on with his ambition and watch his end come. All dictators usually make gross errors. At the time that they think they have managed to ring fence their grip on power, they fall. Right at the moment they think they are at their strongest, they usually plan to do something unheard of, unethical, leading to their least expected outcomes, marking the end of their rule. Robert Mugabe sailed through his dictatorship and looked invincible until the time he planned a dynasty, ushering his wife to the position of power. Mnangagwa's own is the constitutional amendment among other gross errors. Let us look into two African dictators whose behavior is in the category of Mnangagwa and see how they aired, collapsed, and ended. Remember, the life cycles of many dictators 
are usually duplicated. Jean Bedel Bokassa of the Central African Republic ruled 1966 to 1979. Bokassa seized power in a coup and declared himself Emperor Bokassa I of the Central African Empire in a lavish ceremony done in a Napoleonic fashion never seen ever in the Republic. Sounds familiar, right? Bokassa ran a deeply tyrannical regime. His rule was marked by personal aggrandizement and severe human rights abuses. He maintained a close net security apparatus that swiftly punished real or perceived enemies. Torture, arbitrary arrests and extrajudicial killings became the order of the day. In 1979, Bukasa ordered the assassination of school children who protested against the compulsory buying of school uniforms from a company belonging to one of his wives. This gruesome, heinous act drew international criticism and condemnation to Bukasa's rule. Rumors of cannibalism, eating of human flesh that is, were also very rife in Bukasa's kingdom. Altars and sacrifices were done. Dictatorships are extension of Satan's kingdom in the world. The acts of shedding of blood and sacrifices of humans is rife usually in most dictatorships. And this dictatorship of Bokasa was not an exception. Bokasa's rule ended in 1979 after the assassination of the school children when the French paratroopers intervened, one wrong move that collapses dictatorships. So there is always a move that dictators will always want to embark on the moment they feel they are at the haste of their power, not knowing that such moves shall contribute to their utter downfall. Bokasa flew into exile and was later tried and sentenced to death in absentia. Upon his return to the Central African Republic, his sentence was reduced to life imprisonment. These dictators will meet their fate eventually. When you see them dance, eat, kill, arrest others, and speak like gods, you won't believe how small they will look when their day comes. Even Satan himself, it is written that those that shall see him when his day comes will wonder, is this the man who captured the whole world? Who made many prisoners? Who did not open his prison doors to many? And yet, his day will have come. Bokasa finally died in 1996. We want to look at yet another dictator because as we are looking at Bokasa, we are seeing him declaring himself a king and turning the Central African Republic into a monarch, removing the republic part of it and making it a dictatorship or a kingdom. Something that also we are experiencing and we are seeing in Zimbabwe. Let's look at yet another dictator, Blaise Compaore of Burkina Faso. He ruled Burkina Faso from 1987 to 2014. His rule was marked with impunity and brutality leading to the assassination of Thomas Sankara, a revolutionary leader fighting for the rights of the people of Burkina Faso and a one-time ally of Compaore. Compaore's leadership was characterized by manipulation of all political systems to maintain a grip on power. They read each other's notes, these thugs. Opposition figures faced threats and violence. Media was suppressed and elections marred with violence, intimidation, coercion, vote rigging and fraud. The political environment was dominated by Compaore and his associates with the dissenting voices silenced. Sounds like whenever you right? The tide began to turn in 2014 when Compaore sought to amend the constitution to extend his 27-year rule. The move ignited mass protests leading to a popular uprising that forced him to resign and flee the country. This is the end of them finally. Citizens, as we watch the developments of Mnangagwa's rule, it is clear how close to his fall we are now. If you study dictatorships, almost all, they do have amazing similarities weaknesses, misconceptions, attitudes, myths and traits. Their rise to power and belief in invincibility is their common and greatest deception that leads to their end. 
No dictatorship ever was of its own caliber. It is a pattern we can easily follow and predict with accuracy when they are reaching the season of their collapse. Such is the situation with our own Emerson Mnangagwa and Zanu PF. They shall be hit by what they least expect at a time they least expect. As a nation, we have entered into a volcanic season where major spiritual shifts are taking place. Remember, dictatorships are begged by dark altars where human sacrifices are rife. Right on this channel, we have looked at the altars that are holding Zimbabwe at ransom. We spoke about these spiritual altars. We indicated how they are affecting the freedom of Zimbabwe and how they are fighting so hard that Zimbabwe should never be ushered into a nation under God. Human blood is being consumed and the flesh of infants devoured within these organizational cults like ZANU-PF in Zimbabwe. Yet many see them as just ordinary people. They are not. They are not ordinary people, these people. A lot is at stake and a lot is being done in the covers of the night. Most of these people, they do not sleep. And if they do, places that they sleep in, if you get to know or see such places, you would never believe it. Things that they do, acts they perform, food they eat, kinds of satanic food and satanic rituals that they perform, you would never ever believe that they are the same people that you see wearing expensive suits and driving expensive cars in the daylight. When night comes, these people... They transform into vultures, into vampires that you can never ever imagine Zimbabweans. So what we need to do is to understand that when we operate under dictatorships, there are things that people must know and people must do. The fact that we have knowledge that dictatorships are begged by the kingdom of the devil, then it is strength and wisdom already given unto us on how to fight and be able to defeat such organizations and cults. As long as we continue to fight in darkness, like a boxer who has been thrown into a ring while blindfolded, they will never know where the attack is coming from and they can never win such a war or a battle. Zimbabweans have fought against this dictatorship for a very long time and unfortunately we have been fighting a wrong war. People have been fighting a wrong battle for very many years. But now we have reached a point where we do understand the implications of having a dictatorship at the helm of a nation. When you see dictatorship running a nation, know automatically that Satan is running your nation. And such is the scenario of Zimbabwe. And when Satan has taken total control of a nation, what must citizens do? There is no other way that darkness can be defeated. The spirit of darkness can only be defeated by only one spirit, and that is the spirit of the Most High God. When we call upon the Holy Spirit upon a nation, declare the living word of God, that is the beginning of the destruction of all altars and all chains of darkness that can be holding a nation at ransom. We want to thank the God we save in this season that the citizens of Zimbabwe have come to realize why and how the devil has continued to have a grip on the nation a very long time. Now that we are conscientized and we know what exactly to do, we are fighting a battle and see how ZANU-PF is in total panic and how they are going down so fast. We have been given power to trample on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. A thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it will never come near us. Through our prayers and intercession, my dear citizens, we pull down dictators as we stand on high places of authority and power. We are seeing a catastrophic end to the rule by despots in our country and our God has already started the move. Let's keep on praying and standing on the foundation of his promises. Freedom is ours, and freedom is indeed at hand. And victory is definitely, definitely certain. For those that are with us are more than those that are with them. We are winners. We will keep on winning. This very 2024 that we are looking into is a lot in store for our freedom, our future as a nation, Zimbabwe. Let's continue to press on to hold on. Let's continue to declare the word of God and let's continue on our knees. For indeed, 
God is in it and victory is definitely coming whether they like it or not whether ZANPF believes it or not whether they call us dreamers or they call us hallucinators we don't care but one thing that we know is our God is real and his power is real and his will for Zimbabwe is real and his will for Zimbabwe is that Zimbabwe may be restored and given a hope and a future. The future is at hand and the future is coming and the future is definite my citizens. Let us continue to be strong. Let us continue on our prayers. Freedom is at hand. Till we meet again in another video, put a comment in the comment section box. God bless you and God bless Zimbabwe.